Hello everyone, welcome in. I am Sebastian, and I used to play Raid Shadow Legends. In this one, somebody sent me this video, and I started watching the first two minutes of it and said, oh, this is too good. I have to make a reaction video of it. Because as a former Raid Shadow Legends player, I know that Plarium used to pull crap to really frustrate its player base. So I really wanted to go through it from the start. I looked up Call Red, and he wasn't a content creator when I played the game. Uh, he must have just started about, probably, I want to say 12 months ago, 13 months ago. Maybe he came into the, into, uh, I, I had not known about him. But he definitely, given his followers, or the following that he has, especially with the game, I thought, holy crap, somebody put out a rant video with that many subscribers and most likely being in the content creator program and came out against Raid. Because we all know that once you get into the content creator program, Raid likes to really keep you hush hush and make sure that you don't criticize the game. So, what the f player? Right Are away. you serious about this? Right away, doesn't that get you? I mean, if you are playing the game or, or you're somebody that's coming to learn about the game, it's like right away, that's the introduction. This is bull. I I don't I don't know what to do with you. I've been tr I've been trying so hard to get on your side for like the last year. Twenty twenty four has been a good year. And I feel like you've been trying. I feel like you've been trying. And so I, I've been patient. I really haven't called you out that much. I've been patient because I think maybe, maybe No Dime December kind of broke through. Patience, it, eventually there is a limit. You'll have a breaking point. There, Plagium will always test your patience. It's all about what limit you have, what will allow you, what you, the player, will allow them to continue to do. That's exactly what this is. Through the barrier a little bit. Maybe finally you're beginning to like value your player base. You're trying to design a game that va nope, never have values its player base. I mean, that's the route to success. You like money. Great respect your player base and they will not only play your game more but spend money in it but you don't you don't do that for every little bit you give us you're always there with your hand out saying give us more back you owe us that's been their sentiment all along uh a, a lot of content creators i know that have uh, done free-to-play series and they always have tried to illustrate how free friendly and free to play the game is and that you can get a lot of enjoyment out of it they might be true in certain situations maybe especially when you're starting the game but then as you start keep going through it and going through the grind and you ha you realize how much more there is and what you need to do to truly be in the end game it pales in comparison to other games and he's right if you're free to play they're gonna say listen we made a game you're enjoying it give us money and in some way shape or form they're gonna make sure that they get you of it or frustrate you either frustrate you enough to quit or frustrate you enough for you to cough up cash we don't owe you anything we don't owe you anything if we're going to give you money it's because we want to give you money Give us value. Help us to trust you. And we will pay you to play your game. It's a good game. It's such a good game. It could be better. You could fix a couple of things, sure. But it's a really good game. And, and I don't even know if you understand the level of anger that your player base has with you. The level of distrust that we feel towards you. And all the good work that you've done over the last seven or eight or nine months is about to go up in smoke. So I can already sense the frustration with him from Cole Red and looking at the screen and the fact that he has a summon rush and uh, it looks like to be a Titan event up. I can imagine that there might be some type of soul stone you guys are pursuing 
and somehow in the summer rush things got pushed so far down the ladder honestly it's just like every time there's a point. cool thing that you do like you give ninja back for free awesome really cool you know and then there's something like what's going on right now i don't i don't do this very often i don't rant that's not who i am i'm a happy guy I'm an optimistic guy. I'm the king of second chances. I swear to God, if you try just a little bit, I will cut you so much slack. I promise I will. But you can't backslide and do shit like this. So today, Plarium, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do you a huge favor, and I'm going to tell you how to fix your game, how to fix your problem with your player base. It's not hard. It's pretty straightforward, and it will make you more money. That's the thing that drives me nuts. You can give them as much advice as you can, and there might be some situations where you feel like they're listening to the player base, but in reality, they're just taking something that they already had planned, having the board that they are developing, that they know is going to be a cash grab and then sell it to you like they're doing you a favor. And whatever he says here, eventually down the line, the best response, the most likely response he's going to get from Plarium is one of these. Both clan chat and global chat, people are not real happy with you. This is a video that was put out today by Saf from the HH Gaming Network, that's his channel, and it's in Okay, I know Saf. I know Saf. Titled New Thor Titan Event Trickery. And you can see a big deceived here. Although, quick note to Saf's editor. That's not how you spell deceived. Okay, thank you for saying that. The reason that. people are upset because is pretty simple. You omit facts that would be helpful to your player base. And it's clear that your intention in that omission is to create additional FOMO and cause people to spend more money. That's always and been And you're constantly normal. changing the rules that you yourself make. And, and, and as a result, players feel like they're standing on shifting sands. And we don't trust you to look out for us. It feels like an adversarial relationship. And I'm going to explain this very specifically so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go look at your Play and Play events count. Here we are. In the three years that I play the game, the game never felt it was good is good game especially in uh, the pandemic era it was a good game to play i enjoyed it but the relationship with the devs never felt in sync it always felt like you said antagonistic so any time that we would see content being released it was really felt to be like a slap of a face or contrary to the feeling of the community at that time. Yesterday, I looked at this events calendar and I was talking to my viewers about this summon rush and how the Fayhammer Titan event overlaps the end of the Thor fusion event and that had never happened before. Okay, so I think some of the stuff is gonna get, for me, it's gonna get filled in here. So I'm imagining that there is some type of fusion going on. You all are collecting fragments that you need to fuse an epic or you need the shards, uh, the fragments to do the fragment future and the portal, something to that. And nature. so what happened two weeks ago was you launched the Thor's fusion event and you gave us a calendar of events. And based on everything that we've known about you and your history and the history of fusion events, we believed that this summon rush was a place where we could potentially get extra fragments to complete the Thor fusion if we messed up during the two weeks of the Thor fusion event and missed one of those events. If we didn't complete something, this was going to be a chance at the very end to spend some shards and get some additional fragments for Diana and complete the Thor fusion. Potentially a, a way for us to catch up. When in the history of Plarium have you guys known that for them to give you an opportunity to catch up on the fusion, they make you live, breathe the game when the fusion is ongoing. Because if you miss something, you're SOL. No, you gotta grind. You gotta be in the game all the time if you want those shards. 
or you want that uh, epic or rare that you need for the fusion, never, never has Splarium given you a chance to catch up. So this is my first red flag from the player perspective is, okay, you... So I take it there was another summoning rush before this. And so you thought this extra one would be somewhere for you to catch up. I would have not believed that. I, have, I would not have believed that. And there was no information that would tell us otherwise. There was nothing in our history together that indicated that there was anything more than that going on. And now what we're seeing is that this is a combined event. It is part of the fusion event. And it is likewise part of the Fayhammer Titan event. Now, by the way, you didn't announce the Fayhammer Titan event like ahead of time. You didn't give us the event map for that. You didn't announce the Thor Fusion event like calendar until it launched. You used to give us the calendar in advance. You used to give us one or two days warning, three days warning so that we could plan. And you don't do that anymore. And the only real reason is because you don't want us to prepare. Like that's the clear implication that you used to give us time to prepare. Yes, no, that, that's the whole thing about this fusion. They want you to screw up. They want you to screw up because at some point they know that if you want to catch up or get the legendary that is the, the event the legendary, you got to spend. And now you don't. And why would that be the case? Because letting your players prepare is treating your players with respect. It's helping your players. And not letting them prepare is a step towards tricking them, towards putting them at a disadvantage. That is their whole MO. They look for ways to put you at a disadvantage, whether you spend or are free to play, to make sure that you most likely have to either buy something in the shop or as an emergency, buy the crappiest pack that they have available for you to either summon or to run whatever dungeon you need to run to get that last uh, few fragments or the last rare that you need. You used to give us a benefit, and now you don't. And we're not stupid. We know that that's the case. And this is true. Oh, and by the way, looking at this calendar, I'm assuming that this is on Zeus' website, looking at the guy. I'm glad. Uh, Plarium, it's good to know that you're, there are changes, that the events have changed over the years. Of course, with the Titan event, we didn't know this was coming. And we didn't know that this summon rush was going to be part of both events. So I spoke to my viewers. I did a fusion plan video. And I said, there might be some additional benefit here at the summon rush, but we can't count on it because we don't know what's coming and so i advised all of my viewers to go ahead during the fusion event and complete the first summon rush and the champion chase and that's what i did personally i would have predicted that as well exactly what he just said i would have predicted that as well that there is something going on here where they might show you two summon rush events but there might be a trick here involved so i wouldn't have relied in the second one so i'm kind of already understanding where he's coming from with the expectation that these fragments here during this summon rush were extras, that they weren't necessary, that this event was a bonus event for people who maybe messed up the fusion and wanted to spend a little bit of money to complete the Thor fusion, even though they messed up. Or it could be an opportunity to just get some additional resources if necessary. But now what you're saying is, hey, you want this Thor soul, you need to go and do this summon rush. So let's go look at that in game. Let's see what that looks like. Here's your Fey Hammer Titan event and your summon rush. Looks normal so far. But as soon as I go into the summon rush, what I notice is there are both hammer points for the Titan event and champion fragments for the fusion event. Now, I've already completed the fusion. All right, so you don't need My the fragments. My information was that this was only fragments here, that I wasn't going to have to do this. And so I decided to play very well, as well as I could, not miss a single event during the Thor's Fusion event, and complete my Thor Fusion without these champion fragments. And what you have now done is you have said, well, you can't really skip this event if you want the 5-star soul. There are only 250 free points, like extra points, right? You need 1,500 points here in the Fayhammer Titan event to get this 5-star split soul. There are only 1,750 available. There are 200 that are currently in this event that we didn't know we're going to be here. And so now I have two choices. Either I can spend a lot of resources to try to get these 200 hammer points, nine sacred shards worth of resources, 
And that's potentially going to impact my ability to complete the deck of fate down the line and get the guaranteed Freya that you did, in fact, tell us that it was coming at some point. You never gave us a date, by the way, because if we knew the date, that would be too much information. That would allow us to be prepared and make informed decisions. And you wanted us at a disadvantage. So we have to. Okay, so you have a, some type of event coming where they have told you that there's a free legendary and you're most likely going to need to summon a lot to get that. And so they threw this curveball at you. I can understand why he's frustrated. And the player base should really be upset at this maneuver as well. But in a way, you should have seen it coming because that's Plarium. That is exactly how they play the game against you guys. If you're free to play, they are going to suck the resources out of you as much as they can to then play in your FOMO later on to frustrate you enough to either cough it up or just continue playing the game as is. Mess up, potentially, and spend money to complete these events. Because and tr oh, and trust me, the way that they behave, I don't really think they care if you quit. Those of you that are mid late game high players, I don't really think they give a crap if they quit. If you quit, the ones that matter to them are the ones, the whales, the krakens, the ones that are in platinum of arena. If that is still a thing, which I imagine it is. So, the ones that I enjoy real time arena and having to grind out arena for one hour before reset. Those are the players that they care about. The mid late game, they don't give a crap about you. Because that's what you want out of us. You don't want us to feel comfortable. You want us to be uncomfortable. And we know that. And this proves it. My other option is to skip these 200 points. And now for the next two weeks, I have to play near perfectly again. I just completed a two week fusion. I now have to do another two week fusion. And I can't mess up if I want to get that five star soul. Now I could modify my expectations i could drop down to a four star soul sure but you're forcing me to make that choice you're saying you can take less if you don't want to give us money you can take less and the constant message is we only value those people who spend a lot of money yes. and even them we don't value that much we value just for an event just for this event we'll value you but we're going to hit you up again and again and again and again, and it's going to be nonstop at this point. Because if we just quickly look back at that event calendar for the last month, we can see your new philosophy on spending. I mean, it's super clear what you're trying to do. Today is the 17th. You can see that is highlighted in blue here. And we look and we have an extra legendary event, Faction Unity Summon. And we have the Summon Rush here for the 17th, 18th, and 19th. And then starting on the 20th, we have a Champion Chase Tournament for the 20th, 21st. 22nd and 23rd oh, no, so from now until events. the 23rd there is a shard event just every the, single no. day the portal yeah. will not stop glowing for more than a few hours and then it'll be glowing again well let's look at what happened earlier this month we know we just completed a summon rush for the thor fusion event so that was the 13th through the 16th and again this one this current one started on the 17th so again we haven't had this there uh, third quarter money grab. That's essentially what it is. The fact that the portal is on all the time. They just want to persistently get you to summon, right? And make sure that they entice you in some way. Get those resources out of your the out of your uh, virtual wallet here or your true wallet. Just get it all out now and then throw something very good at the end. Just to make you either spend more or not have the resources that you're going to need to get that specific um, event hero or whatever it is that is coming down the pipeline. A few things. First and foremost, start informing us ahead of time. Not going to Let happen. us know what is coming down the line. The reason we're so mad about they this don't want you to get is prepared. because you didn't tell us. If at the beginning of the Odin event, you had said, this bonus summon rush event is also going to be the launch of a new Thor Titan event, and it's going to include hammer points for the soul. Then what everybody is going to start thinking is, that's really good value. I'm going to save some shards for that event. And maybe, yes, you will lose a little bit of money on the summon rush in the middle of 
the Thor fusion event. Maybe the champion chase doesn't pull in quite as much money. But what's going to happen is all of that money is just going to shift here. It's not going to be lost. It's simply going to shift over here and players are going to be happy about it. And by the way, based on what's going on in game, they're still going to. Even if you allow the players to organize and you think that you're going to get the more most money during a particular event, even if they were to project that to them, it would be more beneficial just as in a business standpoint, it is more beneficial to them, to Plarium, to not give you all the information ahead of time. So there is a bigger chance for you to screw things up in your planning or just in a sense, hoping that real life stuff comes in the way for you to miss something. So then you have to spend forcefully to get whatever it is that you're chasing. Whether there is the split stone, whether it's fragments for an epic, whether it's a legendary that is in a event that requires a lot of resources. To, to them, in their analytics, because that's their favorite thing to do is play in the analytics. To them, it's better. They get a sense that it is better for them, for you to screw up, than to plan and then hope that you then pick that event to spend. Pull more shards than they would have otherwise. It also wouldn't hurt to lower your prices on shards a little bit. Not gonna happen. No, that, that, sorry, no. That $25 Psycho chart, that's always gonna be a staple of Raid Shadow Legends. There is no way they ever lower the price for but those. But if you didn't even do that, if all you did was just be upfront and honest with us and not pull f like this every once in a while, we would trust you more. Okay, I think I get now the gist as to why you all are upset. Whether it's just him, I don't think it might be. I think that given the fact that he is making a rant video and if he is in the content creator program, most likely he will get some type of word from the community manager saying, tone it down a little bit, or, or we're going to remove you, whatever, however those NDAs work within them. But they really do try to tight lip their, their um, content creators once they are in the program. And in some situations, sometimes it's better if you, especially if you have the type of audience that he does, it is better to not be in it. Then you're not hamstrung, but by what, um, but what Plarium wants you to say. But I can understand the frustration. Listen, when I played the game, eventually it got to the point where I just said, that's just it. You guys have found my breaking point. And I decided to quit spending. And eventually what happened was that once I quit spending the game and I truly became free to play, my last seven months playing the game, uh, especially in the guild that I was in, because the guild that I was in, or excuse me, the clan in Raid Shadow Legends, clan, the clan that I was in was a competitive clan when it came to CBC, when it came to Arena, and to push real-time arena. And eventually, being free-to-play, you could no longer sustain that, right? Not only that, the whole Hydra Clash thing that just ruined the game for me. So, as when I became free-to-play, I just decided to play the game as it was, and then once I felt that the limit was reached, I was no long, longer getting enjoyment from it, that is when I walked away, which is now getting into 13, 14 months. So, they haven't changed much. It is going to be the same Plarium as it always will be until the game dies, which will probably be never because, let's be honest, they do still have a strong player base. The Krakens are still spending. And as long as that is continuing, they'll be fine. There are a lot of ads for Raid Shadow Legends that still try to bring in new players. If I remember, I saw something uh, from uh, an aristocrat uh, type of um, like a, a shareholder meeting. They were saying that we're kind of redirecting things to do more game development. To me, that said, maybe focusing on other games, but that was a while ago. Either way, just all I'm going to say is 
this is not new to me at least i appreciate the rant because it at least it gives me the perspective that raid is still doing the same thing that it does and it has always does so for me there's never a chance for me to come back which i do uh appreciate knowing because i don't want to deal with player again and number two, if you are still playing, you are in part of the player space, as long as you understand that you're dealing with a lot of Ukrainian gypsies, then keep tolerating it, keep playing the game because you like it, but do understand that things like this are always going to happen, and not everything that they throw at you might be achievable for you if you have real-life stuff to deal with, and you don't spend cash in the game. It's just a fact of uh, a fact of uh, this mobile game. All right, uh, it, I guess in a sense it was nice meeting you. I appreciated the rant, and at least now uh, you give me enough information to just not even think about coming back and um, playing this game. But to all of those of you that are really frustrated, do what I did. Go look at games that are releasing hero collector games. If that's your thing, there is always something there. There might be a gem that you don't know about that you might find that will give you a little bit more pleasure than trying to endure this type of shenanigans, deceitful shenanigans with Raid Shadow Legends. And trust me, from the landscape that I'm seeing, Raid Shadow Legends is no longer the all and all and all of gotcha gaming there's so much of a good product out there that you could be trying and if you spend money you might actually get more enjoyment by giving a couple of bucks to those games than trying to throw 250 dollars for a boy pack here so you can cut chap on a summon rush event like this to try to get what it is that you're getting that's it thank you all very much for tuning in and watching and i will see you all on the next video